with COVID and everybody recovering from COVID, supply chain has been affecting all sorts of industries and people of all walks it's of insane. life. Insane. And yeah. one of the things that we've been hearing a lot lately is cars. What's the deal with cars being so expensive and shortages of cars, supply chain issues? And so we wanted yeah. to bring in a guest, uh, Ivan Suke with Audi <laughs> of Boise. I, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm the general sales manager at Audi Boise. I've been there now for six years. Uh, I started back actually in 2011 with another dealership. We had a couple brands we had. It was uh, Cadillac, Chevy, GMC, Buick, even Kia. Sort of got to cut my teeth with those brands, and I, I got to work alongside a uh, Really, my first mentor, his name is Dave Edmark. I'm sure you've heard if you're in the Treasure Valley, Edmark. But I got to work hand in hand with him, and and he really was showed me the ropes with everything. And I uh, moved over to with the Chalfonts in Audi Boise, and it's it's been a really great experience. I really wanted you to come here because while well, we just got on this conversation about uh, cars, I'm like, wow, we yeah. really need to have a podcast about that. But my last three cars have been Audi, and I've worked with you guys and. And you have been so good at helping me, I guess, understand that whole process. Mm -hmm. And that's so, that transparency is so crucial, I think, for uh, allowing people to feel comfortable with such a huge purchase. Yeah. So I felt like this was a, uh, this was a good um, opportunity to kind of help some other people who might be looking for yeah. uh, purchasing a car in the Treasure Valley right now because it's it's confusing. Well, you, you hit the nail on the head with transparency. That's so the all way of doing business in car dealerships is is becoming obsolete now, and and because people now, especially with millennials, as soon as they get even the slightest hint of distrust or any kind of games, they just walk away. They're gone. Mm -hmm. They don't even you know. There's the old guy that'll come in and he'll want to like have a beer and sit down and he'll want to go back and forth like they enjoy that. That's the younger generation does not have time for that. They're, they're not going to do that. They're gone. And so if you don't adapt to that and change how you do business, you're just going to lose customers left and right. And there still are some stores out there that want to continue to do business that way, but you know, we're not one of them. And there's other ones out there that, that also are, are like us. And I think are going to be the, probably the more, the more successful dealerships out there. Yeah. I'll tell you, I mean, back the way back in the eighties or even seventies, you know, the baby boomers, there, there was no internet. So you had, crazy big markups and, and, and people really never knew what the price of a car was. And it was just this huge game. And so in some respects, what I'm saying is that we've done this to ourselves. The industry has done this to themselves. And so we're in a revolution of sorts now because we're trying to dig out of, out of that way of doing business. And so, you know, along came the eighties and it was still these, you know, people would come into a dealership and you'd never know what the price was. And when you'd ask the price, it was weird game, you know, it was just hide the cheese. And so, what happened was a customer would come in and, and, and the salesman would say, yeah, we're $1,500 over MSRP. We're $1,500 over retail. And they just start there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pay wholesale for your trade-in, you know, less than wholesale for your trade-in. And, and customers really had very little to come. They had nothing to combat it with. And eventually places like Kelly Blue Book, NADA, they would start making, they would publish these books, physical books that you could go buy, but most people didn't go do that. You could, and dealerships used them so that they could do, you know, how they could at least have some semblance of an idea of how to price things. But for the most part, customers had really no weapons at all uh, to combat that. And so they'd go in and, you know, it was just, it was bloody. And they would oftentimes be, they'd own a car that they were stuck in because then, you know, maybe they changed their mind a few years later and they tried to get out of it and they were buried in it with negative equity and all that. And so people kept their cars a lot longer back then. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was because of that. 90s came along, internet came, started to change a little bit. 